college kids' binge drinking antics have become a viral business. The creators call it, I'm schmacked. I'm schmacked. Getting schmacked. I'm schmacked. I'm schmacked. Getting schmacked. Well, Chris, it's called getting schmacked. Whatever happened to I'm Schmacked? It was a giant social media brand mega popular over the last decade for highlighting the craziest and wildest parties different universities around the US had to offer. With millions of fans across platforms, they'd sell tickets to events they hosted as they toured the biggest college campuses in the country, at one point being reportedly valued at $5 million. So what happened to it? And why do no kids today know it as the go-to college party brand that people 24 years and older once knew it as? Well, because as of three years ago, it no longer exists. With the owner being the subject of bad press, platform takedowns, alleged scams, and to top it all off, a full-on FBI investigation. And despite all of that, he's trying to do the same exact thing again, this time using TikTok to market his new college brand, You Gotta. You Gotta what? Who knows? You gotta, you gotta subscribe. And that's what you gotta do. And you gotta watch this brand deal. I'm sorry. Hey there, Traveler. Looks like you've crossed my property line. Normally I would have shot you by now, but lucky for you, I was wearing my Raycon earbuds and didn't hear you coming with the electric grooves on bumping. Come inside, I'll tell you about it. Raycon's wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, a comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life that make them the perfect gift for just about anyone. Whether it's for dancing, running really fast, or filing divorce papers, Raycon is an everyday necessity that makes life more fun. And as the person gifting them, you gotta love that they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Plus, for the next month, Raycon will have a countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of every single day. Look, I'm always listening to music to drown out the constant pain of the white noise of existence, and Raycon makes that easy for me with earbuds that actually fit in my ears. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash gunnertv to get 15% off site-wide using code HOLIDAY. Again, there will be new pop-up deals available every day during Raycon's countdown to Christmas, and I'll try to keep the description box updated with that, but no, you can always just go to buyraycon.com slash gunnertv to get the best deals available on Raycon. Thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. To understand this story, we gotta start at the beginning and travel way, way back to the ancient prehistoric time that is 2011. American Idol's at its peak, Charlie Sheen has tiger blood, and Gaddafi's dead. Do you feel it? Do you feel the 2011? It's also the same year that I'm Schmacked was founded by then 17-year-old Jeffrey Ray, who goes by Yo Frey, and 18-year-old Arya Tufanian. The two happened to meet by chance at a New York train station and bonded over their shared passion of filmmaking. Anytime I meet a stranger at a train station, they try to steal my wallet. Results may vary. Yo Frey being the videographer and Arya the editor, they spent the next year visiting 13 college campuses making montage videos of the campuses, the students, and most importantly, the party scene. And it didn't take long for their videos to catch YouTube traction and mainstream media attention as college party life was previously never really filmed, and possibly for good reason. As it didn't look too great to employers to see a video of you on social media taking a fatty bong rip, even if it was lit as fuck. But then why does Jay seem to be having some regrets? I never knew that it would be so huge. I mean, I never thought it would catch on like that. I really initially thought it would be more so of a thing like, almost like just like a thing to look back on. Knowing now how big it became, would you do it again? I would say, I mean, no, because like I do care about my future and care about like, you know, what I want to do. It's not all going to be like, you know, college isn't forever. While that was a more talked about concern then, today pretty much everyone has pictures of them drinking or being wacky somewhere online, and it's not usually a problem for most employers. Hi, I'm here for the job interview. Hi, yes, uh, take a seat. Said your name was Kevin? Gunner. All right, Steve, before we get started, I want to take a look at some of these pictures I found of you online. Uh, yeah, what are they? I'll be honest, in this one, you're doing a keg stand, in this one, you're doing a backflip off a roof, and in this one, you're doing a keg stand while doing a backflip off a roof. I don't know that's physically possible. And I mean, after seeing all of these, you're hired. These are sick as fuck. Yes. That's how a typical interview goes in 2022, I think. I don't know, I've never had a real job. But in 2012, you didn't really want images of yourself to be seen so publicly like that. When you hear Schmack's gonna be here, what do you think? I'm glad I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go on that video. I don't want my future employers to see me. Seems like one of those things like girls gone wild. I mean, is it worth the stupid picture to yeah. 
ruin your career? This seemed to be the first problem the pair had with the developing business. Not the not being able to find people willing to drink on camera part, there's still plenty of people that'll do that, but the litany of issues that came with branding themselves as seemingly glorifying binge drinking and recklessness. You see, for Yofre, this wasn't the exact vision he had in mind for the brand, but he could justify it because it could help people choose between different colleges. That's Jeffrey Ray, Yofre to his friends. He's the one behind the camera. From adults, like, outside looking in, like, at the surface, it just looks like a bunch of, like, riffraff. It's actually, like, influencing people to go hard at high school and, like, get good grades to go to these schools. How do you know that? It's told me. Despite the very unconvincing told me, it was true and very common for people in high school to look up these videos of universities to see what they were like socially before applying. When you see it, you want to go to this school. I watched this one before I before I applied here. I looked at it when I was choosing what college I went to. So stupid. <laughs> what what freaking idiots would do that? Well, 17-year-old Gunner thought the University of Miami video was kind of cool. Yofre didn't want the brand to be all drinking, though, and said going forward, he wanted to start gathering videos of the sports and academic life and even interview professors and students about the institution's more serious sides, i.e. film what college is for. Ari, on the other hand, knew very well that they already had a successful business model in filming strictly party videos. When we talked with him and his business partner, Aria, they spoke about one of the key ingredients of the videos. Where would your videos be without alcohol? Not very popular. Why? Because th that's our market. And honestly, Arya's right. In terms of the brand they already built for themselves, it would be kind of strange to hear turn down for what play over a montage of students studying and going to class. So by the end of the first year, though super successful, there was a slight split on the direction to take I'm Schmacked. Yo Frey wanting it to be a more holistic college media platform and Arya wanting to double down on the drinking aspect of it. Well, either Yo Frey was lying or Arya had his way because the next year they did the same thing, touring more colleges and making more parts party videos. And all seemed well and good. The numbers kept climbing and notoriety was gaining. And it was gaining a lot. Notoriety had massive gains. Somebody should drug test notoriety. Those gains were so massive. I'm smacked. Strikes again. I'm smacked. 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 Rolls into college town. All over the country. College tour known for its wild times. Starts college parties all over the country. And it's going to show like how awesome your college is. Become a National phenomenon. My parents are watching. I have never seen anything like it. Hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. The videos have become strangely influential. Students say they help them decide which college they wanted to attend. What you think of when you go to college, you're like, I'm smacked. For anyone else, being bigger is always better. Okay, maybe not Kanye West, Lindsay Lohan, Adam Levine, Chris Brown, Miley Cyrus, Liam Payne, Ellen DeGeneres, Drake. Drake, Minions Russia, Amazon, Bananas Want to Eat Them in Front of Women, and John and Kate from John and Kate Plus 8, but usually for everyone else, being bigger in size is good. But for I'm Schmacked, it just came with more liabilities. Enter the riots. <laughs> In September of 2013, I'm Schmacked came to the University of Delaware to party, and that night, students were pretty excited. <laughs> Yeah, I love making noise in the street. Hell yeah, that's my shit. And although this looks super dope crazy fun, it started to get a little out of control. And a college party turned into a mob scene near the University of Delaware with thousands of students spilling into the streets, blocking traffic, walking on cars. The party was announced by the YouTube series, I'm Schmacked which posts college party videos online, but the enormous crowd raged out of control even before the crew arrived and three people were arrested. That's right, all of this happened before they even showed up to film. <laughs> That's how hyped up people were just for them to visit their campus and film a video. And it's not hard to tell why. These videos were seen as trailers for how cool your school was and college being a big part of people's identities, they wanted to show off just how hard their school party. But it got to a level that I'm not even sure Yo Frey and Aria were ready for. With nearly 25 arrests, damaged cars, injured students, and 75 officers sent to break up the crowd, 
it was pretty bad. To be fair though, this was only the second worst property damage ever observed on a September 11th. Before you can process that joke, let's turn your attention back to them with Aria's response to the negative press coverage they were getting. Quote, yeah, I definitely can't lie. The reason why everyone was on campus was because I was in town, but I can't take blame for that. I had a camera. Before we even got there, there were riots. People were already talking about Project Delaware over social media before we even got there. Power of social media is what was the cause of this riot. In reality, if university police cannot manage a university riot, you need to raise the bar for the school and for the students to not act that way. My crew didn't break bottles in cars. We were just filming. Not a great response, but also not the worst. Kind of sidestepping the responsibility to the school and the students, which sure, they had a part to play. But when you just admitted that you were the reason they were there in the first place, it's odd to blame the power of social media for causing the riot. You mean the power of your social media? <laughs> and then couple that with the fact that the I'm Schmacked page had tweeted earlier, the only goal for the week is to make sure the University of Delaware video is sick. That is my main priority. Not to take agency away from the students, but do you think that tweet might be part of the reason people were going ballistic? Oh, another big thing I forgot to mention is they reportedly sold tickets to it. There being $20 general admission or $75 VIP tickets with no venue, just listing their tour bus being parked somewhere near the university as the official address. It wasn't technically a scam in the definitional sense since they warned buyers on the sale page that they do not guarantee anything, but that they will come to Newark and make a kick-ass video. Everything else you will probably get, but you have to find the tour bus. <laughs> do that and we promise you will not regret the purchase. Which is wild because in retrospect, that's totally the reason people were in the streets. They told them to come to the streets. The address was the streets. But I think it's time I stop using they because we're not talking about Yofrey here. This is just Aria. We know this because Yofrey responded to a tweet asking about the $20 tickets with no venue and he responded the following. He said, yeah, dude, I'm not even there. I don't know what they're doing. It's not kosher though. So it seems the communication between the two of them was beginning to falter. Remember all of this madness and our founders are only 20 and 21 years old. Yofrey still can't drink legally yet the two were repeatedly getting I'm smacked into more and more more trouble with planned college events. Just a few months later, on January 17th, 2014, at Old Dominion University, another riot broke out in which a crowd grew unruly and smashed an SUV. With Arya and his two cameramen being arrested on three felony counts of conspiracy to incite a riot and later being released on $7,500 individual bonds. Without the mention of Yo Frey, it seems like he wasn't present at that event either. But he still let them happen as an owner and maintained that the goal has always been to offer perspective of students an inside look at a school's social life to aid in the decision-making process. But that defense was getting harder and harder to hold up as their events got more out of hand. And in fact, for some people, their videos were starting to have the exact opposite effect. Here's a quote from a then high school student named Melissa Adler who said, I'm schmacked made me wary of schools where I heard there was heavy drinking. In response, Arya said, quote, Melissa Adler's a fucking nerd. I'm just joking, he didn't say that, but I'm sure he thought it. Regardless, following the riots and recent events, the boys once again found themselves in hot water and the subject of significant media backlash. This time coming directly at the ethics of their business and their influence of the college culture. It's called I'm Schmacked. The video crews have been on college campuses all across the country. They were at UW-Madison at the beginning of this school year. And tonight, only on Fox 6, Myra Sanchik shows you why this business is so powerful and why universities feel powerless against it. All right, Myra, remember it's a heavy subject. Try not to make too many newscaster puns to take away from that. You're on. The Detox Center is no Ritz-Carlton. Students are sometimes dying to get in, literally. What did I just say? Sometimes at a 3-4. A point three four is huge. We're not talking grade points, but blood alcohol content. God damn it, Myra. University officials nationwide are trying to combat the situation with education teaching kids about the realities of binge drinking. But sites like I'm Schmacked make it tougher to get that message across. Yo Frey and Aria couldn't catch a break and the continuous news pieces were beginning to take a noticeable hit on the I'm Schmacked brand. Suddenly, even some college students were protesting them coming to their school and even frats were banning them from their events, presumably to not be linked to them in bad press. With all the brand damage, even Aria was trying to pull back. In a 2014 article, he made the statement, we don't advocate or encourage drinking or illegal behavior 
behavior. It is stupid and makes our generation look bad. Our generation is better than that. But when all of their videos are college kids drinking and partying, I don't think people really believed him. I mean, he knew what he was doing, lest we forget his response to this question two years ago. Where would your videos be without alcohol? Not very popular. Why? Because th that's our market. Not to mention the description under every single one of their videos was no alcohol or illegal substance is used during filming just props. So it would be silly to say he wasn't aware of the drinking and illegal behavior encouraged in their videos. But Aria was getting frustrated by these news pieces, pinning the entire drinking problem on their business for which he felt little responsibility, leading to what I can only describe as a bad PR move. It's every day, bro. In the summer of 2014, after I'm Schmacked was lightly criticized for stealing a meme tweet, a prevalent problem with competitors like Fuck Jerry at the time, Arya took to Twitter and ramped up his audience to basically harass the woman who wrote the piece and try to get her fired, saying something that in a Call of Duty lobby would be seen as mild trash talk, but in the real world with adults was, uh... Let's just say taken a bit more seriously. Yeah, not a great look for a company trying to fix its image. Tensions were at a boiling point, and one more I'm Schmacked event with 34 underage drinking arrests later, the bubble finally burst. Business Insider published an article culminating all of the information and events I've covered so far, leaving the I'm Schmacked brand at its lowest point yet, being hated by parents, schools, police, and now even most students. Something had to change, and Yofrey made the call to kick out Aria from the company. Posting an update on their Facebook page on September 22nd, 2014, he said, my name is Yofre Ray and I'm the face of I'm Schmacked. There have been many incidences that have happened with my brand due to Aria Tufanian. I wanna publicly apologize for anything that has happened as it was out of my hands. I wanna make it very clear that Aria Tufanian has been removed from the company. Please do not have any contact with him about of any type of business regarding I'm Schmacked. Unfortunately, this is the way things have to be. As I love the I'm Schmacked brand and refuse to let my ex-partner ruined the brand name for a company we all love so much. We are all looking forward to moving in a positive direction and cleaning our image. Hashtag I'm Schmacked is back. An inspiring message with many typos, Yofrey claims to have taken full control of the company. But ooh, that's not really true because after four months of radio silence, Yofrey makes an Instagram post saying that he's actually leaving I'm Schmacked to start a new company called College Weekly, which is still around today. He cites issues like ongoing legal disputes, universities not allowing them to come to campus, and their YouTube channel being taken down as reasons the I'm Schmack brand was unsalvageable. Saying towards the end, so whenever you hear something shady or creepy or weird about I'm Schmacked, just know it is that other guy and not me. Shady, creepy, or weird? Interesting specific adjectives to use on your way out. So yeah, it seemed like a rough breakup between the two, but it wasn't something we couldn't see coming. In fact, the writing was on the wall. However, the personal animosity Yofrey had for Arya could now be seen publicly on display. Upon Yofrey's exit, Arya made a tweet saying, I wish Yofrey nothing but success. To which Yofrey responded, I wish I could say the same for you, but after seeing who you really are after all the years, you don't deserve it, bud, straight up. And then even making several tweets calling Arya a scammer. I wonder if that'll be a theme coming up. After the breakup, I'm Schmacked was on a decline, and it was being felt. Arya would do another bus tour around the country, this time actually renting out venues for their events, but the success just wasn't as apparent. Not just because of the YouTube channel ban, but because other competitors were starting to show up in the market. Yofrey's College Weekly, Dave Portnoy's Barstool Sports and Instagram accounts like Total Frat Move and Do It For State were all fighting for college students' attention. Which, side note, did you know the Do It For State owner was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison because he hired his cousin to hold up a man at gunpoint who was squatting on their domain name, doitforstate.com? Are all these accounts run by crazy people? Now I'm gonna fast forward us four years to 2019 when an article was published about Aria in the New York Times by Taylor Lorenz. Now this is immediately hard to talk about for two reasons. One, Arya doesn't like being called a scammer and has sued people in the past for making that accusation, so I'm not going to make that claim. And two, for those unaware, Taylor Lorenz is a controversial journalist that many people have a wide array of different feelings about. Some swear by her and others swear at her. My only personal gripe with her is when she called the birds aren't real movement a Gen Z conspiracy theory, which is just insulting. Birds are clearly government drones. 
Anyways, I'm not going to co-sign this article, but it's important because Taylor makes many claims of Arya scamming people over the last four years I just time skipped. Of those claims, we have the following. Hiring many young interns for marketing that he did not pay. A stock trading discord that had a lot of refund disputes. And finally, an I'm Schmacked ambassador program where you could pay $300 to Arya to make an I'm Schmacked Instagram page for your school and grow it for no pay. But maybe you can make money selling ads on it in the future. That's the important one. Now, are these claims true? The basis for most of them seems to be yes. But is the conclusion that they're a scam true? Well, that's when it gets tricky and seems to be a bit open to interpretation. Because what really is a scam. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a scam is defined as a fraudulent or deceptive act or operation. I'm no lawyer, clearly, but what it seems for most of these instances is that so long as Arya establishes true expectations for his responsibility of delivery for a paid job or service, that it's not technically a scam. I could be wrong on that, but that's my understanding. So if we look at something, for example, having a college kid pay you $300 to grow your Instagram brand. In most people's heads, they would probably think, yeah, that sounds like a scam and exploitative as hell. But in a definitional sense, Arya can say, well, it was a legitimate business deal done between two consenting parties where all responsibilities and expectations were laid out. We just shook hands. Remember back to the University of Delaware riot where he sold tickets to an event but warned, oh, we don't guarantee anything except that we'll be there somewhere. All of this to say that although he's been cleared of any charges, this this article sparked an investigation from the FBI and DOJ into Arya Tufanian in 2020, officially putting a halt and end to the brand that is known as I'm Schmacked. In September of this year, Arya returned making a TikTok account called Arya Was Bored. There is so much that could be said about Arya's TikToks that it almost deserves its own video. From randomly starting beef with people to endlessly fighting his comments section to launching his new college brand Yugata to launching a paid Discord for rich people to promoting his restaurant reservation app, there's a lot going on here. If you want a full video on that, maybe I'll cover it on the second channel, which plug, 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 I have a second channel at Gunner TV Live. It's got a lot of content I think you'll like. Go check it out. But here, let's go over the important bits. First, did you know Arya was investigated by the FBI and DOJ? Everyone does because he tells us constantly. Fun fact about the FBI New York Times investigation thing. Okay, so the New York Times wrote a hit piece on me. I got investigated by the government before the FBI investigated me and the New York Times wrote about me. This is the house that I had in Los Angeles before the FBI and the New York Times started to investigate me. I was under investigation by the FBI. The FBI basically, the video about the New York Times and the FBI investigating me went viral. When I was getting investigated by the FBI. Um, kind of a weird flex, to be honest. It kind of just makes you look sketchy. <laughs> like I said earlier, he's also constantly picking fights with people. It's funny to watch like some rich kid from University of Arizona that doesn't really have any business experience talking about advice and things he would do as like a current college senior in some fraternity. I didn't get a bid. Bro, I owned the US college market for a decade. What do you mean didn't get a bid? Some of us have lived lives where movie studios want to produce movies about our lives. Others went to some fraternity school and you know, look at you guys, come on. I don't, I, why would? Whenever I see you, I just wonder if you washed your hands after peeing today. <laughs> I don't know why. But above all else, I must stress, he once again has a new college brand called Yugata with an ambassador program where college kids are paying him to launch their own college page at their school to grow his brand. So if you're in college and want to learn how to make money online using your cell phone, I built a new project that has a bunch of college pages basically here. And we started a thing where we build these pages out and help them grow and obtain an audience. Um, if you want to get started, let me know. It's a great way to learn skills if you're in college right now. They don't teach you this stuff in school, and I made a lot of money doing this stuff online prior to this, so not a bad idea. I can't believe that he just got investigated the last two years for this exact shit and immediately launched the same program again. The logo for the brand is the exact same as the I'm Schmacked one. I'm guessing since he was cleared in the investigation that he thinks it's all good now, because again, I'm not gonna make the claim that it's a scam, but it's an incredibly shitty offer. Please pay your employees, that's what they are. And for God's sakes, don't let them pay you. Pitching them, oh, you're gonna learn so much 
much about social media doing this, and you can use your experience and put on a resume to get a real job after college, is such a bad deal, and you know that. That's like me getting a YouTube editor that pays me for the opportunity to edit my videos, but I say, oh, but you're gonna get so good at editing, and maybe you can find someone who will actually pay you and respects your time. But no, in fact, you'll actually make TikToks bragging about how much money you make from your selfish deals. Like that rich person's Discord that I'm sure you care so much about. Built that Discord community for rich people, made $5,000 today, and then I took a 45 minute shower, I made another $3,000. Um, if you don't get it, you don't get it, you know? What do I say? And that's kind of where I'm gonna wrap this video up. Today, Yofre and Arya seem to be on okay-ish terms, still texting each other. Yofre is still currently the owner at College Weekly, but seems to put more of his time into filming a reality TV show called Neighbors and Friends. As for Arya, I would just keep an eye open. If Arya's watching, one, please don't sue me. I, I think I was more than charitable to you in this video, to be honest. <laughs> and two, I don't think you're dumb. I think you're a pretty intelligent person, but I think money and business hungry savviness gets in the way of your moral judgments. You don't gotta sue me for that. It's just what I think. And a lot of other people think that too. So maybe you should listen to people. Maybe you should listen to some people, you know? Be sure to follow the second channel at Gunner TV Live. Follow my Twitch at Gunner TV Live. Follow my Instagram at Gunner Klein and consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member to support me directly. Sorry this video wasn't too funny. I, with no intro or wave painting either, I wanted to make sure I told the story right and I didn't want to make it too gimmicky. But with all that said, good day. I gotta get out of here. The feathered government drones are watching me. Oh shit. Don't move too slow. Fine line between lazy and lose control. They say